I want to talk about how to live in a Charleston type world. How to live in a Charleston type world. Thank you, Ursus. You may be seated. I need your prayers and patience for it's going to take me a minute to say what I got to say today. How to live in a Charleston type world. Annie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Roberts, Carol Denise McNair, Alberta King, Pastor Clemente Pick Pickney, Cynthia Hurd, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lance, Reverend DePayne Middleton, Tawanza Sanders, Myla Thompson, Reverend Daniel Simmons, Reverend Sharonda Singleton. What do they have in common? They all died in church. Anna Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Roberts, Carol Denise McNair died in 1963 in the Birmingham bombing. Mother Alberta King was playing at the organ in church in 1974 and was gunned down in church. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we've died in church before. This is not nothing new to us. Uh, it, it is not nothing for us to have our faith in God shaken to a level where somehow now one person can take from us the right to worship our God in peace. Uh, one person has not that power over us. We need to be reminded that the Charleston Nine didn't die in vain. But it's time for us to awaken to a broader picture and issue here. It is not just that they were shot down by this individual. We cannot allow media to individualize this incident. The problem that America has is that she's unwilling to do what Jesus done when he met the man living in the graveyard. He asked that man, what is your name? And his answer was, my name is Legion. Because, because we are many. And until America calls her demons who they are, she shall continually have these problems. She needs to call her demons of hatred. She needs to call her demons of racism. She needs to call her demons of unequal justice. Justice is no longer blind. She's peeping now. She needs to call her demons. She needs to call her demons by, by name. Have our witness here. She needs to call her demons unlevel playing fields. And then want me to succeed with my hands tied and a blindfold on. She needs to call her demons. And somehow you can run and want to be considered president of this country and call what happened in Charleston an accident, you need to call your demons. America has too many demons that she's not dealing with. 
It used to be I didn't know them, but I knew where they stood. Because they came at me in sheets with hoods on. Now I know them and I don't know where they stand. America needs to call her demons. Look, you're going to have your job Monday. America needs to call her demons. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Ain't nobody's job in jeopardy but mine and I work for the Lord. You can come on help me out here this morning. So this is the problem. This is the problem. This is why this is why the world is where it is now. This is why America is here now. It's because somehow we believe that they have more power over us than we do have in our hand in the Lord's hand. We have not come this far. We have not come this far by ourselves. America needs to call her demons. Now, we as a people believe in heritage. We are proud of who we are and where we're from. But we place our heritage in museums and in cemeteries. We don't fly them over state capitals. America needs to call her demons. You can't tell me heal and the very image that caused my pain is still flying. Now, I think that they ought to be proud of their heritage, but their flags ought to be in museums and their statues ought to be in cemeteries like ours. America needs to call her demons. This boy didn't drop out the sky, didn't come out some back room. He came out of a culture. He came out of a sick systemic system that gave him the mindset that it was all right, first of all, to hate. And you and I want y'all to be careful. Don't you wind up being a hater. Hatred chokes out any possibility of normalcy. You cannot be a normal person if you are hating somebody. Hate keeps us grappled whereby we don't want to speak to one another. Now, we can play ball together. We can fish together. We can hunt together. We even work together. But after that, you go your way. And then I go mine. America need to call her demons. Because they are many. They are many. They are many. When I can be accused of selling loose cigarettes and die on the street begging that I can't breathe. When I can walk in a neighborhood I belong in and encounter some gun happy crazy person who decide they want to play river cup and my life is taken and they walk free. America needs to call her demons. But I can be shot down with a toy gun in my hand without even telling me to drop my weapon and I can kill nine people and be taken alive. America needs to call her demons. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with this picture. When teenage girls are manhandled by authorities. And yet I can kill nine. And walk with a bulletproof vest on and security to my cell. America. Needs to call her demons. Jesus said to that man, what is your 
name. And that's what I want to ask America today. It ain't the land of the free, the home of the brave. What is your name? When I work twice as hard for half the pay, what's your name? When I own the place I live in is inside a gated community and I'm profiled because I'm darker than you, what is your name? America needs to call a demon. This ain't the first time they killed us in church. But everybody won't hit me and then tell me I wasn't slapped. I'm tired of getting over. I'm tired of having to be asked to understand. America needs to call for demons. This was a domestic terrorist act. That's what it was. That's what it is. The boy said out of his own mouth. That's what he went there to do. Kill black folk. Now, I don't know last time you looked in the mirror. And yet they got, we, well, we got to find out if it's a hate crime. And, and, and we don't want to call it terrorism. Why? Because his name not Muhammad? Is that the only reason why you don't want to call it terrorism? If he has not terrorized us, what has he done? Every church in this land got to change how she does business. If that's not terrorism, I don't know what it is. You got to stop allowing the media to shape your thinking. You got a brain, a mind, think for yourself. Walk like a duck, crack like a duck, it's got to be a... Well, talk to me then. You can't come tell me that this boy is the only one. Listen what that man said when Jesus asked him, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion, because we are many. It's a wake-up call. Hatred. Young folk, listen to me. You wind up with ulcers and high blood pressure and sick. Hating folk. You don't Come here hating. You give me any child of any nationality and let me put them together and let them play by themselves. And they'll play with each other and won't realize that there's a difference in their accent nor the hue of their skin. You have to tell your child, don't like my child. I have to tell my child, don't like your child. Hatred is taught. Racism is taught. You ain't born a racist. You don't know nothing about no color. Jim Crow may be dead, but his grandchildren are doing a hell of a job on America. I used to know where I stood because it said colors only, segregated. Now, the signs are down, but the symptoms are still the same. And America needs to call. She needs to call her demons. Because they are many. And until they call by name. No, guns don't kill. Killers use guns to kill. Something is wrong. 
when there's some debate about whether I was raising my hands or charging you, you shoot me, get off, resign from the police department, move to another location, and I'm dead. But yet you can walk up on an armed mass murderer and take him without incident. Two people were driving down the street, car backfire. They said they were shooting at him. An officer emptied his weapon standing on the hood, killed both of them, and he's let go because he said he felt his life was threatened when an over 30 other policemen with him and they're all emptying their guns and he jumps on the hood and kills two un unarmed people and it's all right. America needs to call her demons. Because the one thing about a demon, a demon is a demon. And a demon don't care where it acts up at. And this not going to get to be a problem until he starts acting up where he came from. They, they gonna catch it on the way home. See, crack was our problem. Then meth came along. So all of a sudden now we got a drug problem. It's an epidemic. Because we live in trailers cooking meth. Now I can tell you one thing, you ain't putting the black man and gas together nowhere. Oh, somebody was crazy enough to try that with Richard Pryor, he left burning. Now, I don't understand if you need to change church. I understand if you need to get you another church. I understand. I understand if you don't never want to hear me preach no more. I understand. Just hear me today. Somehow it's supposed to be all right. This demon is a mutant. And when you're dealing with a mutant, it has the power to mutate. When you cut off an arm, it'll grow another arm. The way you kill a mutant, you got to kill the head. And the head is not waving some confederate flag on some web page. They're sitting up in these banks. They're sitting up in high society. They're making decisions. They're making laws. They keep you where you are. America needs to call her demons. The pen is still mightier than the sword. How do we make it? How do we get back on track? Number one thing you got to understand is that there's no answers for Charleston. This is one of those why questions that you got to ask God when you see him. It's a big one. It's a big one because somehow You've been duped into believing because you're sitting up in here, you're safe. That because you go to church, bad things will happen to you. But I need to tell you, bad things happen to good people. You ain't have to be bothering nobody. You ain't got to be doing nothing wrong. Trouble will come. These nine people in church doing Bible study, minding their own business, praising their own God, trouble came. Walked in, sat down, and conversated. And you don't tell me you can't determine what was on his mind? You packing a 45 caliber weapon in a backpack and no Bible? And we are scared. 
we are afraid to see what we see and then say what we saw. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't get that happening, Charles, and I don't want to get into all that stuff. See, I just need to mind my own business. Go on with your ostrich looking self. <laughs> you know about an ostrich, don't you? When he gets scared, he buries his head in the sand. But have you seen that bird lately? Everything else about him is exposed. You won't go long to get along. And everything about you is exposed. Now, if y'all watch me on TV, if y'all want these little boards I'm sitting on, I will send you a resignation. I'm like commodity meat and commodity cheese that has stamped on there, not for sale. Too many people have died for us to have this right and this privilege to speak out, stand up, and do what's right. And if you're offended by my presentation today, you're too comfortable where you are. Don't, don't fool yourself. D don't fool yourself. Do the math. You just may be the one they need. Right now. I need my young people to listen to me. Guns, drugs, drinking, and wild living ought not be what you're involved in. You idolize these rappers, and if I had time, I could call the roll, Biggie, Tupac. They gone. And if they ain't gone, Lil Wayne, Lil John, what? Nah, 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 Lil Wayne. I don't know a word they said. Come on, he can spit at the mic. That's what he be doing to spitting. You behind in your light bill because you're trying to get the latest Jordans. My children got to wear, they would wear the shoes that cost that much, they paid for themselves. And you know what? I can testify they don't wear shoes that cost that much because they're paying for them themselves. My son, 29 years old, has never owned a pair of Jordans. Because when he was at the house, I wasn't paying for him. And when he got money, he realized he didn't need them. <laughs> what sense does it make for you to buy Xboxes and latest gym shoes and your child held back because they couldn't make the grade? We're not going to turn this around by eye for an eye, 242. Killing that young man won't solve our problem. Let justice take her course, but whatever happened to him won't solve our problem. He's not the problem. He's a symptom. Don't be fooled. That because he's locked up, everything's fine. He said, I've been begging about this ever since the Trayvon Martin case. Do you know how long Trayvon been dead? See, you are impatient, but they got patience. But how are we going to make it, preacher? How, how are we going to handle this? We, this is how we're going to handle this. We cannot handle this with Lex Telonius, which says an eye for an eye. A two for two. Number one, you don't have enough guns. 
That's the first thing. Number two, you don't have enough training. They send them early. You send yours to summer camp, they send them to paramilitary camp. You happy because little Billy hit a grand slam. They happy because he can hit something at 200 yards. So we can't. Well, I'm going to get my gun. And we're going to put your name on this list. That dead in the street. That's not the answer. See, when you, listen, when you become filled with hatred, you stop thinking, and you become insane. And then when you're insane, you do insane things. And because you're doing those insanely things, then they can shoot you and walk off and say, I fear it for my life. See, our first aim, young black men, listen to me carefully, our first aim is not to encounter the police. But just in case you do comply, go on the jail, behave yourself, we'll get a lawyer, and then we can fight. But if you dead, we can't fight. Who are you going to take me? I'm going to let them put the handcuffs on me. I'm going to jail. I'm making my phone call. And y'all better come get me. Come on, talk to me, the clo. What makes sense to make for you to be hard? I'm hard, hard and dead. And they can't kick us off TV because we done paid for the whole year. <laughs> Might lose a few viewers, but that's all right. That's just par for the course. Listen to what Jesus says here in the text. He said, you've heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. And that's what we're in a world right now, love, hate world. Love, hate world. They love them and they hate you. You love you and you hate them. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. Because watch, if I hate John Armstead and John Armstead shows up, my day is ruined. I refuse to give anybody that much power in my life. If I have done the work, if I am qualified, certified, and available, and here, I earn the right to be here. I ain't scratching where I don't itch, and I ain't laughing because it ain't funny. I'm going to try to make me think that somehow I need it. Well, Jim, you did feel, no, I ain't on that. Don't be patting on me. I went to school just like you did. I passed them tests just like you did. I got a right to be where I am. So y'all haven't been told this. That's why you're looking at me like I'm crazy. If you are comfortable and everything is all right with you based on what happened in Charleston, you're too comfortable. This should have troubled you. This boy go over a hundred and some miles from where he lived. And stalked out this church. He didn't just wake up and say, well, I'm going to go hunt some black folk. He knew where he was going. He picked the most historic church in his state. A church that had been a voice for our cause. Dr. King spoke from that pulpit. Rosa Parks spoke from that pulpit. Nat Turner and all those went through there with the Underground Railroad. He just, all our history. It wasn't just nine folk he shot. It was where he shot them at. Don't get this twisted. See the big picture here. See the broader scope here. Our children deserve a chance to be able to make it. But they can't make it if the mamas and the daddies don't stand up. They come home and tell you the teacher picking on them. You need to get off work, go down there and find out why the teacher picking on them. Instead of taking a day off for some me time, take a day off for some children time.
But see, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm doing me today. Well, who doing your children? School system, past schools, go say school districts are asking you, if your child is in that district, read to them 20 minutes a day. It has been proven if you read to them 20 minutes a day, it helps improve their comprehension skill, first of all, and their reading ability, and they can get out of the third grade because if they don't get out of the third grade, they won't be in Jackson State Morehouse. They'll be up here on the corner telephone and, and jail road. They building a Hilton up there, baby. They building a Hilton right up there. Three hearts in a cot. And tore down Fair Elementary to build a jail. And you think that this is an isolated incident? You cannot make it being a hater. I've kept you much too long. Jesus said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. And that's what we got to do. That's the only way we will conquer any enemy is through love. Love conquers all. Now, our four parents died loving their enemy. So that we could have some of the privilege that we have right now. You didn't walk in Walmart or wherever. Check in any hotel, wherever. Oh, you think oh, you got a little credit, little plastic, little money. No. There was a day when I left going to Chicago. I had shoe boxes of food. And I couldn't stop and gas up but in certain places. And couldn't stay nowhere unless it was in somebody's house. You need to know your history. Couldn't drink from the water fountain unless it said colored. But I've seen this with my own eyes on the courthouse where I come from, Macon, Mississippi. Colored. And you mess around there and go in the right place today, you still be told. But I just have a little policy that I don't pay and beg. Now, if you want me to beg, then let it be free. But now, if I'm paying, I know, I understand. I feel your pain. Love your enemies. Bless them. Let me just bring it on home. Just look closer and say, y'all are feeling uncomfortable because I'm out there in the world. Let me bring it up in here. But y'all ain't treating one another right up in here. God, let me bring it on home. Shake my head on sudden and tell me it's, I'm so glad to see you and looking at the floor. Take that little dead hand in it and no grip in it, nothing. Pastor, yes, I'm glad to see you. And look at me if you're glad to see me. <laughs> Worship with somebody years. And then go and ask somebody else, what that brother name I sit by every Sunday? Uh-huh. You really need to keep your enemy list, your enemy list, short. Now, you may be on somebody else's list. That's their problem. People listen to me very carefully. Interpersonal relationships, how we get along with one another, say more about our faith in God than our testimony when we stand in prayer meeting. But anybody can fake a happy. But what is it you do when you get through with your little shout? Love your enemy. This is how we're going to make it through a Charleston type world. We got to love folk. 
I don't take up arms and hate this young man. I don't even know this young man. I don't take up arms and hate my lighter skinned brothers. That's not what I'm about. But I'm not also about being a fool. I'm not telling you to stick your head in the sand and act like ain't nothing going on. It's going on. That's why I'm up here talking right now. It's recorded and I want it played. And if they have Tefford Dick Cup this this Sunday, it'll be on next Sunday. It's gonna get played. We gotta stop letting folks play us. Well, y'all little preacher down there, he got a lot to say, ain't he? I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of I always have to apologize for something that happened to me. Eric and Trayvon, those guys were not my sons, but I have a son. And I can't be comfortable not one waking day when I got a young black African American who is successful in life. Because it's some little crazy thing. Some little offshoot of this mutant that we're dealing with, this demonic spirit that we're dealing with will hate my son. That's why men, if you're here today and you got some children, it ain't no happy Father's Day. If you ain't being a father. Now, they mama might be crazy, but that's your child. Y'all got along one time for a few seconds anyway. No, no, we don't understand. I ain't with that because they mama a fool. Well, you, you mess with a fool one time. Real men don't just make them. They take care of them. You right here bragging about, oh, no, that my blood. Ain't your blood if you ain't putting the bread on the table. It's somebody else's blood. <laughs> These young boys don't know the way unless a man showed them the way. Now, I, I have to give a shout out to my sisters. They've done the best they could, but I'm going to tell you this here. A woman can't teach a man how to be a man. She don't know nothing about doing that. No more than a man can teach a, man, a, 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 a girl about being a woman. He don't know nothing about that. Now, I know our mamas had to do it. They knocked us upside the head, did whatever they had to to keep us straight because our daddy was missing. But you show me that boy where that man was right there, I show you a man. See, mama would scream and holler, but she said, I'm going to tell your daddy. And my daddy would say, all right, that was it. Case closed. It's over. It's something about that male voice being in that house that makes all the difference in the world. So not only does America has demons, we got some too. And we need to call our demons by their name. Making babies, not taking care of them. Amen. Bragging about it. One over here, one over there. One in the oven, one just came out the oven. <laughs> Mr. North and Mr. Tate, y'all stand up. Both of y'all, stand up. Stand up. Don't put the kid down. Stand up with the children. Now turn around. Now Miss Tate and Miss North stand up. Turn around. That's what it's supposed to look like. Thank you all for being a part of my sermon. That's what it's supposed to look like. And don't go hating. Well, they ain't getting along that fine. They're getting along right now. We 
got to stop tearing one another down. And learn how to build up. Bless those who curse you. I'm praying for the boy. Because ultimately when this is all over, he's got a heaven or hell to go to. I'm praying for every racist, no matter what color they are. Because you cannot say you love God, whom you never seen, and hate your brother who you have with you daily. The Bible says you lie and the truth ain't in you. And you don't get to pick and choose who your brother is. That boy asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus told him a story, and the person that winds up being the neighbor was not the same ethnic descent he was. Some tough stuff in this text. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Well, listen, you find out you may not be saved in verse 44. The rubber hitting the road right here. Do good to them that hate you. I wouldn't give them. I wish I would see them somewhere. And they need something. The text says do good to them that hate you. And pray for them with the spitefully use you and persecute you. The way we get through this is we love, we bless, and we pray. Love our enemies. Bless them that curse us. Do good to them that hate us. And then pray for those that despitefully use us. Now, Jesus is not asking you to do anything he has not already done. He is the prime example of how to make it in an unfriendly world. Because y'all do know the story, don't you? He came unto his own. And his own received him not. Made the world. Came in the world. And his own folk wouldn't receive him. But the Bible said the good news is that as many as received him, gave he them power to become the sons of God. I, I don't know what tomorrow holds for none of us. But I do know who holds tomorrow in his hand. As a matter of fact, he has the whole world in his hand. And Jesus was teaching him the side of this mountain. Telling us that in order for us to change the world, that we must be the change we want to see. In other words, if you're tired of people hating you, you've got to stop hating others. If you're tired of people cursing you, you've got to be willing to bless somebody. Have I got a witness here now that know that yes, the Lord is still in control. Now listen to me as I leave you now. If they would take your Lord and my God and arrest him. On the yes Lord some trumped up charges. The only thing Jesus was guilty of was loving you and I. But they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Have I got a witness here now? The Bible said they whipped him all night long. And early 
uh, that fired the morning. Uh, they put a cross on his shoulder and they marched him uh, up a hill uh, called Calvary. And I heard him saying, uh, if you think I'm going to run, uh, nail my feet. Uh, if you think I'm going to fight back, uh, nail my hand. Uh, they lifted him higher. Uh, they stretched him wide. Uh, and y'all know what happened on that hill. Uh, he hang there for your sin and my mind. Hey, the Lord, all right. And I heard him say, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Yeah, Lord. And John said that he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. Died! Didn't he do it? He died. They took him down off of that cross and he in the Bible said they put him in a borrowed tomb and three days later y'all know what happened in here this morning if I could get one sanctified witness that know it was early Sunday morning he came out the grave with all the power I'm not worried about a man who can kill this body because my soul is anchored in Jesus anybody in the room been born again ain't you holy to be a witness if you know he lives let me hear you say yeah shout it yeah he lives and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives they went in the Emmanuel this morning because he lives and they worship the Lord because he lives. We came in here this morning and we worship the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. No matter what color you are, no matter what social economic status you may find yourself at, God made us all. And the Dr. King said, we got to learn how to live together a perish as fools apart. We got to learn how to live together. We got to learn how to call our demons. Racism, hatred, injustice, double standards has to change. If it does not change, we'll find ourselves right back here again. But I challenge each of us in this room to be the change you want to see. I don't hate nobody. This boy had it twisted. He said, y'all raped our women and took our country. He had it twisted. He didn't know history. Somebody should have told him history because his story wasn't right. It was we who were sold at the auction block. When they signed the Declaration of Independence, they had papers on us. Talking about we hold these truths self-evident. That all men are created equal. America needs to call her demons. And you tell those running for office that you're going to be politically correct, you're going to meet some in the judgment. Because to be politically correct means I got to compromise with all. And that, that's not what we're called to do. Yeah, yeah. I plead with you to listen to me today. Don't buy what the pundits and the reporters are saying. Know your history. Wake up, people. See, because a lot of us like, well, this ain't never happened before. 63. 
Little girls down there getting ready for choir practice. Wasn't bothering nobody. Some sick, sad individual bombed their church. Then Mama King playing the organ. And it wasn't no white man that shot her. That's why, that's why Earl, I ain't just watching them. I got my eyes on us too. Because hate gets the best of us sometimes. Leave with the message. The message, here's the message. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. That's the message. We're not leaving here burning nothing down. We ain't leaving here shooting nobody. We ain't leaving here going to our job cussing nobody out. That's not the message. You want to get radical somewhere, go home and get radical. And get those lazy folk out your house that ain't working that you're taking care of. You want to get radical, get radical with these little hot teenagers you got up in your house. You want to revolutionize something, change your house. Appeal to you now to offer Christ. He's the solution for this sick world. He's the only solution. I believe. Don't leave unless you have to. We're going to honor our students before we go home today. To me. Oh, I shall have what I decree. Come on, come on. I believe. Let him use your daughter. Let him use. Oh, I shall have. Thank you, brother. And thank you. But I decree. Thank you, Diane. Stay with me to the benediction, please. I believe. We're gonna it recognize our students. to me. And so I'm going to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. I'm going to speak as I am into the atmosphere. What I decree, I believe it belongs to me. Oh, I shall have what I decree. Oh, speak 
Quickly, the hour is far spent, but I need just a few minutes of your time. Uh